If you want to make your own chicken equipment, today we're going to show you how to make a simple but effective hopper feeder. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the chicken enclosure on a glorious sunny afternoon. Welcome to making your own chicken equipment. My name's Hugh and today I want to start a new series we're going to do on how to make and how to maintain your own chicken equipment. And we're going to start off by showing you this. This is a simple hopper feeder. It costs just a few pounds to make but can hold a great deal of chicken food. And as you can see it really doesn't take the chickens very long to work out how to use it. Let me show you how to make one. This is the first kind of feeder I want to show you. I think of it as a bucket feeder. This is a five gallon white bucket, but it doesn't have to be five gallons, it doesn't have to be white, it doesn't have to be round, it just has to be some kind of largish lidded container. You can often get them for free from local bakeries and places who get supplies like icing sugar delivered in them. And you know, for a smile and a thank you, they'll let you have them. But I've also got loads that I got things like fish blood and bone for the orchard. Came in a, probably about a three gallon bucket with a lid, would make a perfectly good feeder. What we're going to do, cut a hole in the bottom and drop this thing. I had to buy this, this is a little spring, they only cost a few pounds. And then you put the feed in the bucket and it drops into the spring and the birds peck at it to get the feed out. Now clearly you have to have it up in the air so it will fit tripod legs to it at the right height for our birds. If you've got bantams you might want it a bit lower, if you've got geese you might want it a bit higher. Suit the height of the legs to the type of birds that you're dealing with. Let's take a quick look at how to make one. First thing to do to make one of these is to use a drill to make a pilot hole in the middle of whatever you're going to use for your hopper. After that we're going to use a hole cutter in the same drill and having the pilot hole I mean it doesn't skid around when you try and cut the large hole ready for the spring. Once the large hole's in place slip the spring in just to make sure that it fits tidily. What I'm then doing is I'm actually going to put the spring in from the bottom, upside down in the factory, and mark where the bolt holes are going to be to retain the spring. Then I'm going to drill holes, they're about six millimetre holes, for each of the bolts to go into the bucket. I always find this a bit tricky because the spring tends to slip around the hole. But we'll put it in place, just leave it there, and then you can see with the shadows, I can actually see where the holes are, line up the holes in the spring and the holes in the bucket. And I'm going to use stainless six millimeter bolts because I've used six millimeter holes to go through the bucket, through the spring, and hold it in place. And I'm going to put washers on everything because I find with these plastic buckets, they're really, really brittle, and if you don't put washers on, it's very easy to drive a screw right through the bucket, or even to crack the bucket by over-tightening nuts and bolts. So I'll put a washer on the other side as well, which is probably less necessary, but just ensures it's there. And then we'll put a stainless nut on the bolt. Now honestly, these bolts are far too long for what I'm doing, but they're what I had in 6mm. What we've got now then is a spring projecting from the base of the bucket. It's firmly held in place with those stainless bolts. And I basically want to hold this up so that the base of that spring is 12 inches off the ground and I'm going to put three legs just screwed through the side of the bucket to do that. Three legs always more stable than four. All milking stools always had three legs. I want the legs to splay out a little bit so I'll put a block of wood with an angle cut in it screwed through the side of the bucket and then attach the legs so that base of the bucket 16 inches off the floor, base of the spring 12 inches off the floor. Make the angled blocks to splay the feet out which helps stability. I'm going to measure a 15 degree angle from the centre of the block. I don't want to cut the whole block into a wedge because that would leave me very little meat on the wood to screw into. I'm 
Now I'm going to use my angle chop saw to cut the angles because I've got one. But to be honest, if I didn't have one, an ordinary panel saw or tenon saw would do this job perfectly well. What I'm doing here is measuring the circumference of the bottom of the bucket. Because if I do that and then divide the measurement by three, I've got a measurement to space the legs out evenly to ensure the bucket is really stable. And that's why we're angling the legs outwards and why we're using a tripod is we really don't want this to blow over in a wind. Next thing, take one of the blocks, mark where I want the holes to be. And once I've done that, I'll use a combination square to ensure that the line is vertical. I'm probably going a bit over the top here, but the old thing, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. I'm gonna drill the holes from the outside of the bucket, but I'm gonna put the screws from the inside into the block. It's just easier to drill the holes from the outside. With the holes in place, I'm holding the block in position and I'm just going to twist the screws in with my fingers to keep the block in place. And that's what we're going to end up with. Again, the use of washers to ensure I don't drive the screw right through the side wall of the bucket. I'm using an impact driver, put them in place. An ordinary stubby screwdriver again will do the job perfectly well. Now, this may look overkill. What I've used there is deck screws for corrosion resistance and big washers but you really don't want this wobbly on its legs it's going to take a lot of weight when it's full let's talk about those legs i've cut a 15 degree angle on the foot that you can see at the bottom left and all i'm doing here is measuring out again where i want the screws i'm going to drill pilot holes for those screws to avoid splitting the wood and then I'm going to use 75 millimeter deck screws to go right through the leg and into the angled block. Honestly, these things are so simple to make. Any form of old lidded container. You have to buy the spring, but they cost a few pounds. Honestly, they are so cheap to buy. So a bit of wood cut and I used about 15 degree angle to splay the legs out. Some workshop scrap for the legs. A few odd screws, bolts, nuts, washers. That's it. That's all there is to it. But because this has got a lid on it, the food inside stays nice and dry. And it also provides a measure of rain protection for any food that sat in the spring at the time. And here it is in action. It's very simple. A peck bends the spring, releases some food and they pack it up and another pack when they want some more that's the simple hopper feeder not our design they've been used for years by game keepers and wild bird feeders and chicken keepers and lots of other people but why do they so many people use them because they're simple they're cheap and they're effective and i hope you see that anyone with a saw and a drill could very easily make their own. They only cost a few pounds to put together. If you've enjoyed that, can you spare us five seconds? Give us a thumbs up down below. Would you like to see more? We've got four or five other videos at least in mind in the how to make your own chicken equipment series from other feeders to drinkers to entire coops and setups. We'd love to share them with you but tell us what you'd like to see and then we'll do it. And if you want to see those videos just whack on subscribe and the bell next to it you'll hit every time we upload a new video but whatever you do come back and see us soon take care